it's been a very stormy day and there's more coming so I'm not sticking around Soda Lake too much longer but um, I, I've been asked to do essentially a boondocking 101 for how to actually connect everything related to my boondocking setup. So I'm going to walk you through this and if the wind is too much right now I'll just overdub it when I go back inside the uh, audio. Uh, this is going to be rvacrossamerica.net forward slash boondocking 101. I'm Alan and you may not see me in this video but you're going to hear me and you're going to see what it is I need to share with you. So you can see here approaching storms from the uh, south and west and these are my solar panels this is the solar suitcase and the black cable coming from the solar controller this thing here is the solar controller right here the black cable coming from it runs over to my batteries and I do not use the port on the side of my camper to go to the batteries. This is the port to which I refer. This is something that Zamp pays all RV manufacturers to put on there. It requires a Zamp fitting and I don't use Zamp fittings and I don't use Zamp products. Over there what you just saw was a Renogy solar suitcase. That's what I recommend. Go to the post for links and go to the post for additional details. Again, rvacrossamerica.net forward slash boondocking 101. Now, this is a fifth wheel, and this happens to be where my batteries are. If you have a travel trailer, they're probably in the front, and I like this setup, but there are, of course, very workable setups for travel trailers and for motorhomes. Now, what you're looking at is a pair of six volt batteries, and you can see here, this is the alligator clip coming from the solar panels. This is an alligator clip going to the inverter. I'll show you that in a minute. This is for the positive terminal. That's the alligator clip coming from the solar panel or from the solar controller. And that is the alligator clip coming from the inverter. The inverter is a temporary setup for me. You could make it a permanent setup. And the inverter is what converts 12 volt DC to 110 volt AC. All I have to do is turn it on and I've already got a plug into it. It's got the ability for two outlets and they're regular household 120 volt AC outlets. Turn it on and from the extension cord, and again this is the inverter that is connected as you just saw from itself on the far side up to the batteries here and here. I just make sure that any inverter that I purchase, and this is the best tech, and you know I've talked about the Renogy very highly, and again, there's more information on both of them over on my post, rvacrossamerica.net forward slash boondocking 101. So here, the inverter is converting the 12 volt DC coming out of these things and going into this and converting it to 120 volt AC and coming out of this electric outlet, pay attention to the yellow cord. The yellow cord at the moment is sitting on the ground outside my camper. I could easily open the camper door and run this cord inside and anything I plug into it when I turn the inverter on is going to be able to be run directly from the inverter. Now with a Renogy, I could actually connect it directly to my camper, the main power. The Best Tech doesn't like that. The Best Tech is a 1000 watt, the Renogy is 2000 watt. So again, when this is open at the base of my door, when the screen is employed, only the screen, you've got some brush and you can easily run the cord under here and inside and of course you have to be a little careful when you walk in and out but that's where 110 volt is coming into the camper and I can even run a uh, multi-plug off of that and run a few appliances. Generally for me it's the, um, it's the laptop that has to get handled. 
It's getting windy out here, so again, I don't know what the noise level is, but I'm trying to speak up so you can hear me. Now, that extension cord, if it was coming from a Renogy inverter instead of a Bestec, could be run around here to the back. Now, in the back, I've got my generator, which is not in use at the moment and would not be in use on a sunny day for sure when the solar panels are doing their work. It could run right to here, that extension cord. That extension cord would connect to this extension cord, and this is where the magic begins. I have a 15 to 30 amp converter. This is a male 15 to a female 30, and again, I have all the information on the post. I've got then a male 30 to female 50, which I need because I have 50 amp service. If you don't have a 50 amp camper, you don't need this connector. You do need this connector because every camper is at least 30 amps. So this is my main 50 amp cable that was supplied by the manufacturer and it runs around and it runs right into the camper. So again, using either the generator or an inverter which is enough wattage in order to supply the camper and not overload itself you can run right into here but again you have to realize that the power is ultimately being drawn off of the batteries so there's a limit as to what kind of 110 ac appliances you can run and that's where i talk about high wattage versus low wattage again go to rvacrossamerica.net forward slash boondocking 101. I'm hoping that the audio came out all the way through this because I really don't want to overdub. I kind of like the way I communicated in this in this video and I hope it's helpful to you. All right, so Alan here, rvacrossamerica.net, real scenic view you've got of my main power cord going into the camper and um, uh, I hope it's helpful. Uh, rvacrossamerica.net forward slash boondocking 101. Go to the post. Extra details are there. The links are affiliate links, so if you do buy any of this stuff, it does help me to defray my website costs, and I appreciate that. And I'll be out of Soda Lake within 24 to 48 hours because the weather here is going to turn hellacious very soon. Anyway, you have a great day.